All right, welcome back to Binary Adventure. Um, we already covered this whole stack frame setup process in our previous video, so we're going to dig right into the actual program now. This call to main is not really that relevant to what we're doing. That's a uh, some kind of a runtime thing with Windows. But our actual program starts right here at this line. And what's going on here is we're placing 44 hex, which if you right click, you'll see that it's 68 decimal. We're placing that number into the memory address, which is currently at our, in the top of our stack. So, and what we're doing is we're placing it into a D word space. So when you see move D word pointer, uh, bracket ESP or move D word pointer bracket subtick. All that means is go. So that means inside of the ESP register or even like the EAX register, for example, there is some memory address. So what this means is take the memory address out of whatever register is between these brackets, go to it, and then reference the memory there in the size of whatever we specify. So if it's D word pointer, that's a double word, that's four bytes. So we're gonna take and place the number hex 44 or decimal 68 into the four bytes which are at the memory address which is currently in the stack pointer. That's a mouthful. So we're gonna go to the memory address in the stack pointer which actually refers to somewhere inside of RAM. And then we're going to, when we get there, we're going to take up a D words worth of space, which is four bytes in this case. We're going to take up four bytes and we're going to place the number hex 44 there. So if the number hex 44 doesn't take up four bytes, then there's probably going to be some zeros there as well. But that's all we're saying to do because we need space for an integer in case we need to take up those other bytes because this is the data type that we were working with here um, for this data is actually a size t, which I believe is, is an integer. Now we call malloc to allocate us some memory on the heap and malloc returns a pointer, so an address to other memory somewhere into EAX because in this calling convention that we're using here and in I think one or two other calling conventions the return of a function is stored inside of EAX by default EAX so so we take the address out of EAX and then we place it into an address on the stack currently. So let's look at this address. So what do we do here? We took the stack pointer, we subtracted it by 20H, and now we're referring to ESP plus 1CH. So what the hell does that mean? So let's look at this with the calculator real quick and it's gonna become real clear. So let's say we have, well, let's just look at the difference between the two. So let's look at hex 20 minus 1c. So 1c is smaller than 20. And so look, lo and behold, it's 4. So all we've done now is we've said, okay, well, we put the number hex 44 into the first four bytes of our stack. So now we're going to move down the stack or move up the stack or no, move down the stack actually, because we're adding to the stack pointer. So when you add to the stack pointer, you're actually moving down the stack. So what we did is we already reserved space for this when we did our uh, ESP minus 20 hex up here. So we're gonna move we're gonna move down the stack and into the reserve space that we already had. And in there, we're gonna place the pointer that was returned by the malloc function. So effectively, what's gonna happen is, well, at this next instruction, we then dereference that pointer and place that inside of EAX. So effectively, EAX has become our struct at this point in time. EAX now refers to our person struct. And now this will all start to make sense because what we now do is we move some data into D word pointer EAX, and then we move some other data into word pointer EAX plus four, and then we move a zero into byte pointer EAX plus six. Now this can be really cryptic unless you know what to look for. But what's going on here is since this represents our struct in EAX, anything, um, anything with EAX plus 
something, especially when it's a multiple of four like this, or two, what that means is we're going, we're referencing the members of the struct. So the beginning of the struct, which is the first member of the struct, will be at EAX itself at this point in time. So if we go back to the struct and we look at it, that's going to be name. So the first 50 bytes are going to be name here. So what we've done is we are, we are placing this data into the name variable or, or character array in the struct. And then if you look closely, you might wonder, well, this must be part of the name too. And this also must be part of the name because name holds 50 bytes and we're only, we've only gone six bytes in. And you're absolutely right. Because if, you, if we right click this here and we press R or click that, we see what's going on here. We'll, we'll press R on this one as well. So see J O H N and then N Y. So the original, uh, string that we're putting in there here is Johnny. However, we have two move instructions. Why is that? Why do we have two move instructions? Well, the reason why is because we can't fit the N and the Y into this, into a D word. We can only fit four bytes and we've used those four bytes with J-O-H-N. And so now we need to go and, and, uh, move a little bit deeper past the f the first four bytes, which is why we do EAX plus four, because that now takes us to the to space for the fifth byte. And then we put a word, which is two bytes, in for the rest of it. So we now have a word, which is NY. So now we've spelt Johnny, but remember, all strings in C need to be null terminated. And so we take the final byte and we reference it as just a byte, and we move EAX plus six. So why are we moving EAX plus six? Well, we currently have J O H N and Y. That's six different characters, and we need to cap it off with a null terminator. Now we started at zero, so in order to get to the seventh character, we just do E A X plus six, and we put a zero there. We move uh, zero or the null terminator into E A X plus six, which is right after the Y. Now we're done. We're done filling in the name field. So now we need to get past because we've only used seven of our 50 bytes. So we have 43 bytes left inside of that name uh, member that are basically just going to be zeros or we, we could use, but we're not using those. So in order to get to the next member in a, to that we want to populate, so first we populate name, then we populate the hair color. Now hair color is past age too. So we now have uh, 43 more bytes to go by plus four. So we have to go 47 bytes down to get to the beginning of hair color in order to populate that. So that's exactly what we do. Because we place, we go ahead and take the beginning of the struct, place it back into EAX again, so that we could do some math with it, and then we go 38 in, 38 hex in, because there's probably some padding between the the members, and at that point we dereference the memory and we place some more data into it again. So let's look at that. Let's right click or let's just hit R and check it out. Brown. It's brown spelled backwards because we're in Little Indian, which is the reason why John Johnny was also spelled backwards. Little Indian architecture um, or storage stores the bytes in opposite order in memory. So we have B R O W. So we we didn't get the N in there once again because we can only fit four bytes in a D word, and so we have to then do another move instruction to add the last byte in, which is N. So we do, um, actually, we, we reference this instead of a byte, we reference this as a word. So again, probably some alignment stuff going on there. So we place N in a word worth of space, which is, uh, of course, two bytes. And now we, there's probably already a zero there, I'm guessing, because I don't see it moving a zero to cap it off with as a null terminator, which is interesting. But 
so now we take the beginning of the struct and we place it into EAX again. And now we we go 34 hex into the struct from the beginning. So what's 34 hex? Um, that is 52 bytes into the struct. So now let's look at what might be 52 bytes into the struct. So 50 bytes is brings us into to name. And now two bytes past that would take us into age because age is four bytes. Now, again, there may be some padding in between, but that's where generally where we are. And what are we doing? We're moving the number 2B hex into that age integer. And what is that? That's the number 43. Now look at our code, and it's the number 43. So that's exactly what's going on right there. Now, that's pretty much it for our struct code. And I think you can see now how a struct is actually used at the CPU level. It's, it doesn't really, the concept of the struct itself doesn't exist. It's just a way to reference different memory sizes in order to uh, create a sequential object in memory, essentially. Now, this would be a lot easier to figure out or to, to view, especially in the future in other functions in the program and stuff, if we could actually label this. So in the next video, I'm going to show you how to label this in Ida Pro so that it parses out and makes a lot more sense. And then from that point on, I'm going to explain the rest of the function to you, and then we'll conclude. So thanks for watching. I hope it was helpful. Um, don't be afraid to do this. Don't be afraid to take some time. It's, it can be time consuming, but take some time and go through every single step of a function in assembly language and make sure that you 100% understand why everything's happening because it makes you that much better when you're reverse engineering programs and understanding the compiler and um, the machine instructions. All right, thanks for watching and check out the next video.